I got a call from the caseworker and said he is going back today. Hey guys, my name is Lisa and my husband Peter and I make weekly videos about foster care. Uh, so make sure to subscribe if you are not already. Uh, as you can see, I am in a completely different location than I normally am filming. Uh, this weekend, Peter and I are traveling, and while I had a minute, I wanted to uh, actually film some things that I'll be able to use later on, but that way I actually have content for weekly videos. Right now, I don't have a lot of time in my house um, by myself, and so I just was like, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna film a couple of things, and there's so much that happened um, to us this summer as being respite parents, and I wanna share uh, one of those stories today. Uh, as you know, Peter and I, uh, we opened our home up for respite for the summer, and it was a great time to open our home up for respite because that's a time that a lot of foster parents do travel and, and need um, someone else to watch their kiddos. And so I was um, nervous to do respite, but I was also like such a great experience. I loved it. We ended up having 20 different kids ranging from zero all the way to uh, 16, 17. So it was just such an amazing time. Um, but I wanna share one of those stories that just like completely um, caught us off guard. And so as you re remember, I shared a video of like the four teenagers that we had at the same time. And while we had those four teenagers, we also had um, a couple days overlap of two toddlers uh, or preschoolers um, with the teens. So we had 14 girls and two four-year-old boys. And the boys were from the same foster home, but they were not uh, siblings. And so they had a different case plan, you know, all of that. This is actually our third time that this summer that we had these boys. And so it was really great. Um, we started forming a relationship with people. Yeah, out of those 20 kids that we watched, um, several of them came multiple times. It was so cool over the summer just to see the growth of the boys because, you know, you saw them like month after month and I just got to see like how they were progressing in their foster home. And it was really cool to start forming a relationship with that foster family. So that was awesome. But what was just like totally threw me off guard, the two four-year-old boys were supposed to be there for two weeks. I got a call from the caseworker and said he is going back today. And I was like, hmm, do you mean like he's going to like have a visit with his mom? Because I knew that they had been working on like trying to have visits and all those things. And um, it was just very sudden. And like I said, I was not the foster mom. I didn't know all of the background, but I knew that when this foster family went on vacation for two weeks, they did not expect reunification to happen while they were gone. They did not prep the boy for that. And and those and they had kids and then their kids were missing this four-year-old. And it was just like, I was like, what? What's happening? And so <clears throat> I ended up calling um, the GAL that I had and then um, that boy's therapist and just like, hey, like is like they're going to be like support for him. Like, you know, it was just like such a weird moment because I have never felt so helpless. Like, wait, like, you mean like right now you're going to pick him up? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, are you going to wait until they get back from vacation? Like, it was just insane. And I've heard of these things happening. <clears throat> It never happened to us before. Um, so this was good that I got to experience this. Um, just that moment of complete and utter helplessness. Like, is this best for this kid? I don't even know this kid that well, but I don't know his plan. I don't know like any of details of his case really. <clears throat> is he going back to a safe environment? Like, I mean, I just get so protective over anyone that comes into our house, for no matter you know how long or short. And so I went into such protective mode for this kid. And I was like, wait a second, like his, you know, foster brother, like they, I want time for them to like say goodbye to each other and all this stuff. So we had worked out a time that the caseworker was gonna come and pick him up. And it was gonna be way after nap time. So I figured, you know what? I'll let the boys nap and then I'll tell them because it didn't make sense to like ruin their complete nap time. So, um, cause you could call like right before nap time. So I was like, all right, I'll let them nap. Well, then they decided to move up the time. 
So, um, I woke the one boy up from his nap to get him um, in the car with the caseworker and the other boy woke up from his nap and his foster brother that he had in his life for several months was gone. And that was the absolute hardest um, to try to explain to him. I didn't, they didn't have time to say goodbye. So by the time I initially got that call, until the time they were there, it was two hours. Two hours. And you know, it was difficult for that foster family to process when they're supposed to be on vacation. I mean, I did call them to let them know what was going on because I'm like, uh, I feel like you should know this. <laughs> and um, they were thankful that I let them know, but also it kind of just completely threw a wrench into their um, family time that they were planning on and just they were worried about him. And uh, they were also worried about the boy that was left at our house. You know, how is he handling it? And, uh, you know, when the other boy woke up, you know, he was like, oh, where's so-and-so? And I said, yeah, he got to go back with his mom. And he was like, oh, and so he thought it was like, you know, like a visit. <clears throat> and so like every night and every nap time for like the next week, he asked about him. And I would just be like, yep, yeah, remember, he's back living with his mom now. And he, he had so, so much, you know, so much fun with you. And I had pictures um, that I had taken of the two boys and I printed those out um, for the boys left in our house to like be able to um, remember his friend. It was hard. It was um, difficult to walk through. And like I said, that was all going on while we had the teens. Well, you know, we had all this stuff going on with my family. Um, I shared another video of my sister-in-law's, um, you know, in critical condition in the hospital. So it was like, <laughs> honestly, like the craziest week of my life. It felt like it was just insane. Um, but it was good and I'm thankful that, you know, he got to go home with his mom and, you know, that's obviously the goal. It's just so hard when it seems so sudden. And I was like, whoa, like, don't you think it'd be good for the mom to like, give her some more advance notice just so like she can prepare her home uh, for him coming back and uh, you know that wasn't that wasn't what was hap what happened so uh yeah it was a different county than i was used to working with too it's um indianapolis the county indianapolis is in and i was like yeah if i'm going to be if we were gonna be licensed through that county i would definitely i think want to go through an agency um, just because what it sounds like was like a week prior or a couple days prior, they had this conversation that that might be a possibility, but they forgot to pass that information on to the foster family. So then they were just left in the dark, which isn't okay because like you as a foster family, you, you make your day to day decisions based on what you think might be a plan. So, I mean, two hours notice isn't a whole bunch. And so it was definitely a chaotic time. And I did get a video call of them real fast before the boy left just so they could say their goodbyes and that they love them, um, that they love him and uh, he, you know, got to <laughs> make silly faces at them and uh, it was a good time and I took a couple screenshots um, of that video call and sent it to them so they could have those, those memories. But yeah, just a... You know, foster care, you don't know like day in and day out what's going to happen and everything can change. Um, but you have to go with the flow. And at the end of the day, you have to trust that like God loves these kids so much more than we ever could. And he will care for them, um, whatever they go through. And that, you know, they can go, you know, with your love and um, be set up um, for the next um, phase in their life. And so anyways, I've heard of crazy things like that happening like like hey we're coming right now and it's just it hits you and i i mean <clears throat> in that moment just i've never felt so like helpless like wait wait <laughs> is this best for him i don't know what's happening and i can't control it he's not my kid he's i just get to care for him while he needs a safe place um and that's the role of foster parents is just to care for them um as long as they need it and uh, yeah, at some point you have to let go um, the control because the, you can't control everything. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you are not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.